just about to walk into the ICT Demo Center. It's essentially a showcase of all the technology solutions that the Estonians are kind of driving out into the economy. So it goes from e-commerce to e-government, e-schools, right across. So they've got kind of a center where they're showcasing all this great stuff. What's neat about this is that because Estonia focused on making everything e, electronic, uh, over the last couple of years, um, this is just going to show just like how how they've been able to, with this focus on electronic e, I guess, or electronic, um, has kind of like really driven the economy and really kind of been like the focal point for what a lot of what they're doing. So we're going to get to see some of these, you know, I guess the implementations of what some of this means. How do we drive more innovation in research and development within a number of parts of government and in, in the economy? How do we make sure more kids, uh, this next wave of kids, are more interested in technology and interested in going into careers like that? What, what we're really impressed with is how Estonia has brought that into the school system, made it much more of a higher priority thing, and so there's a lot more kids that are going into those types of careers, which gives Estonia a great edge up globally. Uh, we regained independence from the Soviet Union in 1991. We are a very, relatively small country, 1.3 million, uh, but no one is giving a credit at being small, yes. And uh, decision makers in the private sector and in public sector, uh, they had kind of uh, pressure to solve problems in a smarter way. So they realized that it's very expensive to have your own country. Yeah? Yes. And uh, the only resource we have is a human resource, pretty much. We have kind of oil shale somewhere, but anyways, mainly we have our two hands in here. Yeah? And uh, they decided to solve, to use ICT to reduce uh, uh, any kind of administrative burden, to let people, to have as a thing public sector as possible to let the people work in private sector to generate the GDP. Yeah? And uh, we were kind of lucky to have the Institute of Cybernetics established by Soviet Union in Tallinn, 1960s. And after the collapse, all these engineers, they stayed here. So you had the place down? Yeah, we had talent pool to, to build these things because in 90s there was not much uh, software available. And uh, if, if there was, it was uh, very expensive. So we, we build things by by our own. Since 2000, we save our citizens' time from declaring taxes. Yes, I did it in Australia. It took me half a day to collect the papers. I had to pay hundred dollars to to the accountant. And it takes five minutes in our country. So if you multiply it with the amount of taxpayers you have, so you can see how many how much working hours you save from this administration. Yeah. Uh, we use mobile phones since 2000 to pay for parking in public places. Then uh, we used uh, we used ID card as ticket in public transport since 2003. Now they are replaced with RFIDs. Then first possibility to cast a vote over the internet was 2005. So far we had six elections when, where we used uh, internet voting and the voters uh, using this internet method is increasing. growing, in, in, increasing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then 2008 we connected all the family doctors and hospitals. We have this primary healthcare system, so everybody is having kind of personal family doctor. And now there is a patient portal we can get access to see full medical record. And 2010 e-prescription was launched, so nearly 100% of pres prescriptions in our country are digitalized. Because I yep. think a lot of the power of what you've been able to do is unlocking the potential of data talking to, like citizen data being shared yes. without the citizen's explicit consent at every single step of the way. Yeah, if you have more and more transparency and everything is becoming public, uh, you have less problems with the privacy as well. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. so once the government have received information about me, let's say my address and all this stuff, uh, they should not ask it twice. For example, if I'm going to another state agency, they will ask this information online from the other agency which is responsible of yeah. holding my and processing my data. And also to share this with private sector. And in this case, for example, if I'm going to apply for the home loan, the uh, bank will ask me, can we check your okay, it's personal the data? Yes. That's what, so that's if you give yes. permission to the private state, that's my question yeah, from a while ago, that's what yes. I was wondering. They so, ask me first, can we? Then I would say, yes, you can. 
So if you check that, then they get access to whatever information you yeah. get. But can, again, this is the thing. You could probably revoke that at any point in time, right? Yeah. You can say, I switch banks. I want to revoke yeah, yeah, sure, sure. access to yeah. that information from yeah. the old bank, and I only yeah. give it to the new bank. Right? Everything which is uh, considered as a private information, I as a citizen have control over this. Yes. So I can give permissions. I can take the permissions. Uh, think, let's say if some police officer is checking my details inside their database, mm -hmm. I can see this. Ah. So you know who, who's yes. access to you? Yes. 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 If some doctor is accessing my medical record, I can see, see the it. doctor name, ID code, and from which hospital. Ah. Now that's the yes. so the, the, and if they that's, 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 that's how you get that's people you to yeah. hear. Yeah. 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 Well, again, it comes back to that, and it comes back to the fact that it's open, and everyone gets to see, because that's the, the, that's the boogeyman that people get afraid of, right? Yeah. They're like, well, if I give you my electronic information, I've seen this a million times, if I give you my electronic information, then everyone's going to get at it, right? It's like, well, what, what if, if I can tell you everyone who did get at it? What if I could tell you that you can completely see all the stuff if you yeah, want, that and I'm going to tell you that you lock it down and that you can only give access to stuff and you can revoke access? The size of Estonia is roughly the same size physically or geographically as well as population-wise of the Maritimes. And the amount of stuff that they've done here in terms of advances in I ICT infrastructure in all forms of society is unbelievable that they've been able to do this over the last 20 years. You know, a lot of times people push back on this whole going to an e-identity or, you know, e-records, e-health records, e-voting, all kind of thing. They're worried that they're going to lose control of it. Well, in fact, they're already straddling a little bit of E and a lot of physical like information and then by putting physical information in all these different spots they don't have control over it. And so the fact that you move it all into E infrastructure and then you can see you know who's looked at it you know, or you can lock down certain parts of it and you can decide who gets it and you can revoke access you completely control information. It's totally different and I think that kind of paradigm is something that we need to kind of get out there so people understand. This is actually way more advanced and good for the citizen, but it's also great because it allows so many other things to happen so quickly. So we got a chance to meet uh, representatives uh, from the e-government side uh, with the government of Estonia, explaining to us about the, what was going on with their programming. And then met a series of uh, outside organizations that are, uh, that are involved in essentially dealing with schools and, uh, and promoting uh, STEM and ICT uh, within schools. You guys represent all of the, the technology companies then? And like you have the association for all yes. of them? Yes. Okay. okay, so MBA are similar to our MBA, MBA ITC, ITC uh, exactly. organization. Okay, yeah. so I, I'm, I'm a, a startup technology company guys so I've been I'm working with companies so I'm not in I'm not in an association I'm not with the government or anything so I'm just like a I'm like one of your members type thing right mm -hmm. and so I've been working with our version of that in our local in New Brunswick which is our part of Canada our province mm -hmm. uh, and we've been doing stuff to try to help get more kids into technology because right now our startup tech tech space is growing quite a lot but the amount of students is kind of like either been it's been in a decline and now it's just kind of leveled off okay. way too low. One of our members' interest is to get the workforce for mm -hmm. the sector. In the three-year perspective, we need at least 3,000 new people in our right. sector. So how we get them. Uh, and also the new ICT sector vision what our companies have uh, just this year said out is that here 2000 and 2000 they want to see that the ICT sector in Estonia, in Estonia is doubled. So that means that we have to get somewhere this uh, workforce. Now, that, what's interesting is the stat you have that there are only 16.25% of students are choosing ICT. Mm -hmm. It's uh, 2011. And that's 2011? Yeah. And it's gone down or it's stayed? It's uh, have increased. We also see that there is huge uh, possibility among uh, women. Yes. Because the recent study, this year's study, showed that only, how it was, 20% in the sector are women who are working here. It's an untapped resource. Mm -hmm. you know, girls yeah. are really good at this. And it's, mm -hmm. there's no reason why if you can keep them going through yeah. the system, yeah. then they're going to be you know, able to fill those gaps. It's a great mm -hmm. perspective I had you know, mm -hmm. in terms of like, we need to fill the gaps. Yeah.
I think what we got out of it is a very interesting uh, uh, view as to how this country in about, you know, 25 year span brought in a very pragmatic and, and, you know, built piece by piece manner, brought information technology into pretty much every sphere of their society. And it's kind of, and, and they essentially have become over that period leaders. Uh, both in e-government, provision of services, uh, and uh, they've really captured some of that energy. So you kind of see that, you know, the public sector innovation driving the private sector stuff, and then the school piece, which we then saw, was very similar in the sense that, you know, almost everyone's kind of feeding off that energy and then pu pushing it back into the school system uh, with, uh, with respect to their involvement with IT. So it's the whole ecosystem. And you know what? Yes, we are advanced in many ways, but we're far from advanced where we need to, where we could be. And it's taken a country like Estonia, with the same size of the Maritimes, basically, 20 years to advance to where they are today. And they're going light years ahead of us as well. And we can catch up. And we can do that. And we can, the other thing is, is that we need to start looking at how do we go to our private sector. And this will help encourage more people to get in tech. Is how do we go to a private sector and say, this is the vision. We need partners to come in, pitch, you know, and basically we respond to our RFPs to build this stuff, right? And when we do that, we're reducing costs and we're increasing the amount of participation and, and more openness and more all kinds of stuff. All that stuff comes when we are able to do that. But we need to get more students into ICT in the long run so we can get more and more of their creative minds working on this, including the minds that we already have.